Eight, Eddie is back from the Mosh, and we talk about an event coming up there this weekend. But before we get to those details, let's talk about something that's been on the radar of everyone, and that is this picture here. And I'm so glad you're in because yeah. I love to learn about this stuff. And for the last couple of days, I haven't had the opportunity to dive into the details of what makes this so remarkable. So without knowing the details, I'll give you, I want you to point to something that you think is in the foreground in this picture, because we're looking at major depth. Like yeah. we're looking at things that are in front of our nose and things that are just out there on the horizon of the universe. One thing that catches my eye. Okay. Right here, this. Okay. The swirl, because again, I don't know, but is that a galaxy? Is that its own, oh, is that on. what that is? Come on, of course, yes. So this is a storm of stars, yeah. that one right there. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. told that we could zoom oh, in, cool. look at yeah, that. Yeah. So, that's a storm of stars, the same way a hurricane is yeah. made up of raindrops. This galaxy is made up of stars, right? Um, but that is not the foreground picture. Uh, the thing that's in the foreground, you're looking for all of these bad boys right there. These are stars that are in our own galaxy. They're kind of photobombing this image <laughs> of the stuff that is way out there. It, we could go into distance and scale in another time that sure. I come over, but these things are just in front of our face and they're, they're foreground stars photobombing. And then can I ask another question here too? Yeah. The color, right? So a lot of yes. times when we see these things, it's usually just like one color. Yeah. So like the oranges are really popping out. Yeah. Why is it? How are we able to capture that when in a lot of other pictures we do not? Again, we could go further into this, but the universe is expanding and light as it moves through an expanding universe gets shifted into to red. And so what you're looking at when you see the red color, oftentimes, it's not the only reason why we might see reddish galaxies, but um, when we see these reddish uh, galaxies, it's because they're so much farther that they've really been shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. There's more to it because all of this is really infrared light. So none of, uh, it's not visible light, but it, it, there's, there's a lot and we just have a couple minutes. But in general, if we're looking at these small reddish galaxies, they're way further in the distance. So we have foreground stars that are in our own galaxy. We have these mid, we have like these mid range uh, galaxies that are going to be thousands of light years away from us, millions of light years. And then we have the distant galaxies way far out there. One last thing I want you to notice. Look at how weird it is to have these warped and stretched images. Yeah. These are galaxies that are in the distance. Like if you're the observer, I'm these distant galaxies. And there are very massive clusters of galaxies between that actually warp space. So the light is being warped like a lens. As a matter of fact, it's called gravitational lensing. And so we can see these galaxies that are all just warped and weird being actually lensed gravitationally by the very massive galaxies that are kind of clustered here in the center. When we look at this, how many galaxies are pictured in this ballpark? Um, like, it, it, do we know? It just uh, looks to be a couple thousand. And then in a galaxy, how many suns are in a typical galaxy? Hundreds of billions to potentially that trillions. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is just one little snapshot of space what, that so doesn't stop. We are, you're a sand grain on your finger held out at arm's length. That's the, that's the size of the nighttime sky that you would be looking at right wow. here in this image. And then another question to kind of maybe yeah. put it in perspective. How many suns are there? Because we all know that a sun, there's planets around a sun. So when you look into oh, this, oh, oh, oh. right? So on average, the data that we have now is that on average, a star has right around one planet per star. Yeah. Okay. There are going to be stars that have booted planets out and are planetless for other reasons. Um, but in general, on average, one star has about one planet. And of course, there's ones that are going to have 20, sure, and then there's sure. going to be ones that are planetless. But there are many planets. It was just a few weeks ago that we passed 5,000 confirmed and documented planets around other stars. Wow. So, and you know, it's interesting. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Yeah. It's worth way more than a thousand words it's, in this case. It's worth a couple of segments yeah, on your show. Seriously. You know what I mean? Seriously. All right, next picture. Uh, this one is the one that people are really looking at, and I have a demonstration for this. I uh, think because I saw this picture like an endgame or something, right? It's so beautiful with all of those different colors. And what I want you to understand, I had this idea last night 
for a demonstration in order to show this. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking flour and I'm putting it on a dark sheet of paper here. And um, <laughs> Wait, what we're on. gonna- Where is this going, Eddie? <laughs> what we're gonna do is you have the straw right there. Okay. You are gonna be the energy of stars nearby. And what I want you to do is take that straw and I want you to blow the flower in one direction. Making a mess is part of the fun. Okay, so go for ready? It. Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. What I'm gonna do is tilt it up and maybe we can get a close up look, but what you see is a definite like wall yeah. of material that is the flower that was on our sheet of paper. Let me see, oh, there you go, right? Yeah. And we have like the emptiness and then your your breath has blown that and we kind of get these, these little arches and nice little areas of density because you blew material into other material. Sure. This is what we're getting and all of that is being irradiated by the nearby wow. stars that are part of a star cluster like up in here and outside of the image itself. And so what we're seeing is the leading edge of dust and gas that has been blown it's against so the cool. other dust and gas. Yeah. The same kinds of like, you know, creepy crawly amoeba looking type stuff is the same stuff that we're seeing in this image right here. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And what a great way to visualize that with yeah. that experiment. I love it. It's so a, one of the things I wanted it. to get you to, because I know we could talk about this forever, yeah. the event coming up on Saturday. Okay. So 50 years ago, over 50 years ago, we had a, a, just an epic step in discovery. This is an epic step in discovery, but not near as epic as landing on the surface of another world, the moon. And so every July 20th, planetarium people and space people know that date because it is the anniversary of what? We landed on the moon. We landed on the moon. And so to celebrate that, we're having a concert with a local band that does what they call space rock. And they're really great live. They sound amazing. We're bringing in engineered sound, they're gonna play live. And we're using archived footage from the 60s. We're using our full dome imagery. We're using lasers. We're using lights in order to make this music come to life in celebration of space. And the band Skyview, correct? Skyview. Yeah. yeah. So they got they a great name for it. Yeah, this absolutely. Kind of a thing. Yeah, it so it's right like in. a really cool opportunity. And one of the things yeah. too, we talk about this all the time, I feel like so much has been happening with space, especially like the last five years. Yeah. We seem to be going up in space a lot more, uh -huh. our technology, you, you know yeah, I mean, yeah, what yeah. we're able to do. For a while, it was almost stagnant. You yeah. go back like 10 or 20 years, and now mm -hmm. a lot's happening. But Eddie, thank you so much for coming out here, explaining this, talk about the event, and doing a little bit of an experiment to really help us get the concept of what it's all about. Yeah. We appreciate it. Um, people want to learn more about the MOSH? Uh, they need to go to themosh.org and take a chance. Come and see us in the planetarium. We're not going to let you down on this particular concert. It's just like we're pushing the envelope of what the planetarium can present. It's beyond the music. It's visual and hair-raising. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Stick around. More to come right after this.